It was a sunny day in Eugene, Oregon, and I felt like going out to take some pictures. My photographs are often places in search of their story. I'd just gotten off the phone with my son, Ben. We were making plans to visit him and his wife in California. I figured I'd drive over to Springfield. A few days before, I received an interesting email. It began, Dear Mr. Craig Hickman, your kid pick software changed my life. It was from artist Jeffrey Allen Scudder. He wanted to visit my studio and meet with me. It seemed like an opportunity to think. And I hadn't thought hard about kid pics in a long time. This year was its 30th anniversary. My younger son, Arthur, had this tattoo of the undo guy put on his arm. I wondered why Jeffrey was still so interested. When Jeffrey arrived, he was excited to see the original self-published kid pics from 1990. He asked me what it was like back then. So we decided to watch some VHS tapes. Uh, run us through kid pics and I want to see sure. as much of it as we can here. All right, let me show you. Kid pics is a paint program designed especially for kids. It uses not only visuals, but sound. As you can hear, each tool has a characteristic sound. And this is our rectangle, this is our oval. Even our undo is fun and has its own sound. And there are some real fun effects you can have clearing your screen. This one's Firecracker. My son Ben was using a, uh, an existing paint program uh, one day when he was three years old and I was very surprised at how well he could operate the mouse. Uh, he, could, uh, he could draw lines and select tools uh, and he, he just, it just took him a few minutes to do that and he loved it. But if I left the room and came back I would inevitably be found that he uh, pulled a, uh, a menu down and had selected a desk accessory or done something to stop the process and he found that very frustrating. And uh, I enjoy programming and this uh, seemed like uh, a good project to develop a paint program that, uh, that Ben could use uh, and other children could use, but uh, Ben was really the, in a sense, uh, kind of the boss. Uh, I would come up with ideas and, and try them out on, on Ben, and if uh, he had any trouble with them, then it got changed. It was a, a case of the, uh, uh, the customer's always right. Jeffrey knew an astounding amount of detail about my old software. But he didn't know about this charming dog I made when I was just starting out. I showed him my favorite newspaper and magazine reviews and clippings. I wanted to write the program so it was fun to explore. So even if you didn't know how to use it, you had some reason to try things. And also, you knew that if you tried something, you, you wouldn't end up in some place you couldn't get out of. Then he started to have fun. This one is kind of just wrecks things. It, it kind of just goes around and, and, and uh, yeah, fuzzes things up. That approach and the different features made Kid Picks one of Oregon's most popular exports. There's a new Japanese version and French and German are already in production. It's a business that began because of a three-year-old's frustration. Lou Frederick, News 8. Other than saying howdy, my reason for calling you is that David Boy has become a huge Kid Pix fan. He is making all kinds of artwork with it and having it printed up to poster size. In fact, he gave his wife Iman a series of Kid Pix paintings that represent their relationship as a wedding anniversary present. He has now learned about a new version of Kid Pix and really wants to get his hands on it. So is it possible to get him one? I am sure he will send back bug reports as he is on the internet or who knows what. Let's start with the pencil tool, which is a very simple, straightforward tool, and we'll kind of make, whoops, never mind, that's not what we're going to do. 
Um... Jeffrey wanted to know if I had thought of Kid Picks itself as an artwork. I think it is. Uh, or at least it's not something to worry about not being. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. On one hand, it's uh, what Broderbund called a productivity software, mm -hmm. where it's kind of a tool that someone else uses to make something, you can sort of make art with it. Mm -hmm. I think just in general, working with software, one of the problems working with it is that it's so open-ended. You can do so many things yeah. uh, that that can be a little, little disorienting. But I think people kind of misunderstand that, and, and they think, like I did before I programmed, that it was a very dry thing. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, the opposite is true. There is just so much more that can be done with programming as a creative tool, and in the future, I think we'll see that happen, and, and see it go from being kind of a, a niche art, uh, a little like photography was. When I started photography, it was kind of a questionable art. But over time, that's changed, and now photography is sort of on equal footing with anything else. And we see other, uh, you know, other, other arts going through that, uh, uh, st those stages. And I think programming has not quite made the full journey yet. Yeah, especially a program that uh, is supposed to be used as a tool. KidPix is a, is a tool. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't like uh, generate a painting or, right. or something. It doesn't really fall into the category of what we would think of as like systems art mm -hmm. um, or even new media art, right? Because it's like a commercial product that is meant for people to use. Yeah. There is some parallel with Moybridge's photography of the mm -hmm. uh, um, study, motion studies. Yeah. That when those were made, they were not made as art. They, they were actually, in, in many ways, made to be tools for artists because mm -hmm. if an artist wanted to know how a horse looked at a certain part of a you know, place in its stride, they would refer to these pictures. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but over time, uh, that work you'll find now in art museums. So that kind of technical thing that start, seemed like a technical thing at first ended up really being art. What meaning do you think that Kid Picks has culturally? I wanted it to kind of expand people's idea of, of what, say, a, a drawing program could do or what a computer could add to that. Because at that time, people who wrote computer software, and especially paint programs, were often very apologetic about it being on a computer, and they always gave it names that referred to painting, you know, even though they didn't paint program. Yeah. It, isn't, it isn't really paint. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I sort of wanted people to have a positive experience. I suppose if there's anything I wanted actually was just to do something with the computer that gave people a positive experience. Uh -huh. They walked yeah. away and <laughs> felt maybe their life was a little more interesting now than it was before they started. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. At least for me, it certainly changed the way that I looked at drawing mm -hmm. and thought about what drawing was for. Mm -hmm. You know, often when I'm drawing with a, with a pencil or a traditional media, I'll think about um, ways to make drawing fun or ways to make mm -hmm. it more exciting for me. And so I'll come up with a lot of the sort of kid picks idioms in my head, you know, like when I make a mark, I'll make a sound in my head or with my mouth to mm -hmm. sort of draw the mark or something like that. Um, and so one thing that always really excited me about kid picks is that the meaning of what I was doing was just using the software. Like mm -hmm. it didn't really matter yeah. what I made that's right. in the program. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, it just wasn't really about uh, the results. It was yeah. all about just uh, the fun that I was having, just playing around and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That was the, uh, my experience with with you know my children, and other children, is that they enjoyed making things. And if, they, if the parent put the picture up on the refrigerator, that was nice. But yeah. that was not why they were making the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, they were making the picture to make the picture. And I think also to start to see things differently, because if the program isn't really about leaving with some physical picture then I think it's more about leaving with a mental picture. Mm -hmm. You know, leaving with the idea that it's just fun to play with right. images. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you really created, I think, a beautiful system for playing with images. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was eager to see some of Jeffrey's paint software. I noticed he had a camera and lots of little objects. He made graphics on the screen and used a marker to draw underneath. Then he lit a beeswax candle and started spinning it around on the computer while waving his hand in front of the lens. Jeffrey drew simple shapes which became colorful brushes and twisted the picture around to draw in reverse. We used his phone to make a patchwork photograph. 
this one painted automatically. If you didn't like it, you could say no, and it would paint something else. He picked up a game controller and started giving me a slideshow of digital paintings. I learned that most of them were made using his phone. I hadn't seen pictures like this before. They had a unique and unusual beauty to them. He put my son Ben and me in one of his paintings. My tribute to kid pics, Jeffrey said. That's his photo over there in the corner. All the zooming was making me dizzy. Then he started twisting a bunch of knobs and developing a glowing yellow face made out of colored dots. It was wonderful. He started spinning things around again and painted moving spirals. Just beautiful, gee. Thanks, and we can, let's go a little faster. He talked about his traveling and lecturing overseas and shared perceptive theories that inspired him. One of them had to do with these loops of strings. The ideas were unique and idiosyncratic. Uh, so people must kind of ask you to characterize what you do, uh, and what do you say? I'm like uh, Joseph Boyce who grew up on kid pics, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really interested in education mm -hmm. and all the, and these systems of play. Sometimes I'll even talk about how, you know, of course I was inspired by a lot of software when I was growing up. You know, even just playing Mario, for mm -hmm. example. If we think about for a second, Craig, like what is a paint program? Mm -hmm. You know, like what does it mean? How is that category kind of defined? Mm -hmm. And it's really a program for making images or manipulating images with some limitations, right? So we were talking once before how if you make something in kid pics uh, and show it to someone and they know what kid pics is, they're probably gonna notice that it was made in kid mm -hmm. pics. There's all kinds of evidence in the, yeah. in the image, right? Now, of course, if you take screenshots of Mario, you'll think of it as being an image of Mario. But you can still make images in Mario, right? Mario is still a way of manipulating graphics mm -hmm. on the screen and configuring images in a certain way. It's just that the rules are different. Mm -hmm. So I kind of think about uh, paint software as being this really broad uh, sort of category. It doesn't really answer the question of how I really describe my work to people, but when people say, oh, you make paint software, I try to just expand their idea of maybe what the paint software actually is. Jeffrey went outside to call for his Uber. So I showed him my RGB porch light. It had been a long day, but we kept on going for a bit. I could tell Jeffrey was inspired. It's important to meet people like that.